You're watching Connection TV with Pastor Titus Lee. Thanks so much for joining us today. You are about to receive a fresh word of insight and truth that will take your life to the next level of growth and victory. Be blessed and enjoy. Hello, thank you for joining me today on Connection TV. My name is Pastor Titus Lee and you are going to be blessed as we discuss the four evidences of faith. This is the first part of a four part series in which we're going to talk about the evidences of faith. You know, faith is a part of all of our lives. Uh, specifically, the kind of faith that you have dictates the types of manifestations that you will see in your life. Your level of faith will determine how victoriously you live in Christ Jesus. Now, there are four evidences of faith that I want, to, want you to identify. Number one, faith is a statement. Secondly, faith is a stand, it's a step, and then faith is a stop. And today we're going to discuss the statement of faith. So I want you to get your Bible or get it on your phone or on your iPad, and we're just gonna dig into the Word just for a little while, and I promise you, you're going to be blessed. Now, Romans chapter one, verse 17 says, the just shall live by faith. Come on, say that with me. The just shall live by faith. Now, the word faith means to be persuaded. It comes from a Greek word, uh, pasteo. It means to be convinced or so convinced that you're convicted of a truth. And God's word is true. His promises change not. Therefore, your persuasion will determine your pronouncement. So your pronouncements, what comes out of your mouth, will indicate really the level of your persuasion. Now, in our history, over the years, there have been people, great men and women, who've made pivotal professions. They've declared uh, uh, great statements in, in the midst of difficulty when they were under pressure. For instance, Patrick Henry said in 1775, give me liberty or give me death, as America was about to commence in a revolutionary war. Winston Churchill said in World War II that we will fight in fields, we'll fight in streets, we'll fight in hills, but we will never surrender. Congressman John Lewis said, get in trouble, necessary trouble, to redeem the soul of America, even as he stood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Understand that, that what you say will really determine what you see. So my question to you, friend, is well, what type of statements have you been making lately? What, what have you been saying lately? What have you been speaking over your home, over your marriage, over your finances, or even over your body? You know, organizations, and, and businesses and corporations oftentimes have mission statements. When you, are, um, when you go through an orientation to start on a job or, or with a company, oftentimes they want you to learn what their mission is. And they would even oftentimes ask you to recite that mission to make sure that you understand it and it's ingrained in your mind why you are there working. Well, what is your faith statement? What, what's your faith statement for this season of your life? Now understand, in spite of the conditions and circumstances, you can override them with the right faith statements. And there's a lot of negativity that sometimes we see in or on the news, or you may have people that call you with bad news, or maybe you've got a negative prognosis, or maybe there's just pressure around you to conform to behavior that does not uh, edify you or those around you. You still can make a faith statement that's great. Now, another way of saying that is, is you can pronounce your persuasion of God's preeminence. To be preeminent means to be Lord. You know, we often say Jesus is Lord. Yes, he's Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord. I believe that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, based upon his lordship or his dominion, you literally can speak authoritatively based upon who you are in him. 
<laughs> Let me tell you a quick story. When I was a little child, we would run around and play in the yard, and I had three brothers. And uh, oftentimes, my younger brother would sometimes be in the, in the house or around my mother. And, and when it was time for us to come in and eat, he would often say this. He would say, uh, he would call us all by name, and then he would say, mom said or dad said, come in and eat. That was significant because if he would have said it in his own uh, might, we would not have responded to him because he was the youngest of us all. But when he said, mom said, or dad said, we responded to it because of the authority that they had. Do you know that your life is hid with Christ in God? Therefore, you can speak and decree things based upon the lordship of Jesus Christ. You can decree it. Now understand what a decree is. It's an order or a command based upon an official judgment. So kings oftentimes make decrees in their kingdoms and those decrees become law. Or a judge can make a decree in the courtroom from the bench of, of his courtroom or her courtroom and that decree becomes a law. Well, guess what? You're also authorized. Come on, say it with me. Right in that living room, right, right where you are, say, I, can, I am authorized. Come on, say it again. I am authorized. In other words, you, you're authorized. You've been given the authority to articulate God's greatness when Satan is attempting to grind you down and wear you out and weaken your faith. You have been authorized. This, this, is, this is what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. He said, I have believed, therefore I have spoken. That's significant. There's a correlation between his certainty and his statement. Because he believed, he spoke victoriously. Because he believed, he made statements that cemented what he believed in his spirit. Job 22, 28 says, thou shalt decree a thing and it will be established. That's significant because sometimes when you're under pressure and you're facing horrible circumstances, it's easy to say things like this. Well, it's over. It'll never get better. I'm doomed. No one has ever recovered from this sickness. No one in our family has ever made it through anything like this. Well, don't sing the blues or say the blues. Turn that around to an authorized decree and say, God will preserve me. Say, God will get me through this. Say, God will get the glory out of this. In a moment, I'm going to tell you how and show you how your faith decree can get you through the fire. Stay connected. I'll be right back. Are you looking for a place to grow and fulfill your spiritual destiny? Then join us at Southside Worship Center. We are located at 7724 South Racine in Chicago, Illinois. We are a vibrant ministry where people care and overcome. You'll receive dynamic teaching and anointed worship along with relevant programs for the children, teenagers, and adults in your family. We have two dynamic services on Sundays at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Word Workout at 7 p.m. Be sure to check us out at sswcchicago.org or on Facebook. We hope to see you soon. Hey, welcome back. We're discussing the importance of your statement of faith. And I, and I told you that I'm going to share with you how your faith can get you through the fire. Now, if you've read the scripture or been around church any amount of time, you've heard of the story of the, about the three Hebrew boys, how they refused to bow to uh, Nebuchadnezzar's golden image. And look with me uh, to, uh, to Daniel chapter three, verse uh, five. And it says, this is what King Nebuchadnezzar said to everyone in his vast Babylonian kingdom. He had erected a 90 foot tall golden image. Actually, many historians say it was pure gold, 90 feet tall or nine equivalent to nine stories now, which is a, a sizable uh, uh, edifice. And he wanted everyone to bow down to this image in homage to his greatness and the greatness of his Babylonian kingdom. In Daniel chapter three, verse five, it says, 
that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down in worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the fiery furnace. Boy, that sounds like a threat. <laughs> so, so the king had made a decree. His decree was that everyone in his kingdom, in his domain, was to bow down to this golden image. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had, were, uh, had come from the nation of, of Judah, and they had uh, been uh, introduced to the law of God, which says, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. And then also, it said, thou shalt not bow down to any graven image. So there was the decree of Nebuchadnezzar, which was saying everyone in his province was to bow, but yet there was the decree of God's word that said, you shall not bow. Sometimes there are contradicting decrees in your life. And boy, that can be difficult. You're kind of caught between a quote unquote rock and a hard place. So at this vast dedication, think about the quandary. The, it could have been a crisis of faith really for these young, upwardly mobile, professional young men, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But when the music played, and when everyone bowed, the scripture says that they did not fall down upon their knees to worship this golden image. They did not bow. And that's significant, because them not bowing affirmed their faith stand before everyone around them. Can you imagine the peer pressure? You know, sometimes there, there's not just teen peer pressure, there's adult peer pressure sometimes, where everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone's bound to the same image or the, sometimes it's not a golden image, it's a false imagination. It's, it's uh, something that, that's untrue. It may be a lie, it may be deception, and everyone's bowing to it. Everyone is paying homage to it. Everyone is worshiping or acknowledging it. And sometimes you're caught between, uh, do you bow or do you stand up strong for what you believe? Our teenagers oftentimes deal with that same thing in school or among their peers. And so they stood, they did not bow. Come on, I want you to say it with me. I will not bow. I will not give in, I will not give up, I will not give out. I will stand strong in what I believe. I am persuaded, come on, say it. I am persuaded that he will keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. It does that matter what's around you? It doesn't even matter what threat comes against you. You can know that God will deliver you. So this is what happens. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't bow, and the word got back to the king. And the king was like, you know what? Obviously, they did not understand the instruction. Let's bring them in. Let's have a talk, talk because I don't want to throw these guys into the fiery furnace. They're, 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 they're great assets to the kingdom. They're smart. They're educated. They're, they're the best thinkers. We don't want to put them away. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do, do you really understand what my command was? That's the question that they were asked. And, and then it's interesting how he, he, they restated what was to be done, what his expectations were. And then he said, now, if you don't bow this time, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. In verse 15, Daniel 3, 15, look at that real quickly. It says, and who is that God who shall deliver you out of my hands? Whoa, what a challenge. Not only were they told to bow, but their faith was challenged. Who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? You know, there's an old statement that says that man's arms are too short to box with God. And I really believe that. You, sometimes the enemy would try to intimidate you and, and grind you down and wear you out and wear down your confession. But this is what distinguished these young men. They were threatened, there was peer pressure. They could have even easily given in and given out. But they made a strong faith statement. They made a pivotal profession under pressure. This is what they said in Daniel. 
3, 17 and 18. Look at this with me. They said this, if it be so, our God whom we will serve, who we serve, excuse me, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. There are two key things that they said. Okay, king, you have the authority to throw us into the fiery furnace, but we want you to know that our God is able to deliver us out. But if he chooses not to, we still won't bow. Their statement of faith magnified their God when they were under intense pressure to compromise their confession. It's so important to magnify God when the devil and when the enemy is trying to minimize him in your heart and mind. They said he is able. Everyone say, my God is able. Come on, say it again. My God is able. They were speaking of his sovereignty, God's sovereignty. To be sovereign means to reign. It means to have total control. You know, Jehovah God, who they were serving, is king of kings. He's Lord of lords. He's master of all. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. And everything in between is subject unto his word. And so this is significant because God is who he says he is. And I want to, you to embrace that, that God is exactly who he says he is. He is Jehovah Rapha, your healer. He's Jehovah Roi, he sees you. He's Jehovah Rohi, he's your, your shepherd. He's Jehovah Shama, he's there. He's God all by himself. And as the old people used to say, he doesn't need anyone's help. The three Hebrew boys knew this. They knew this. And so they made it a statement saying he's able, but if not. And sometimes you're, you're in a moment where you have to say he's able, but if not, I still trust him. If he heals me, great. But if he doesn't, he's still able. If he brings me out, awesome. But if he doesn't, he's still my deliverer. If I get the job, great. He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. But if, he, if I don't get the job, he's still my provider. You see, don't decrease or diminish or minimize your faith. Magnify your God even when you're tested and under trial. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar was incensed by their faith statement. He told his um, people around him, heat up the furnace seven times more. Literally, it means in Hebrew, make it as hot as possible. Some say that furnace was 25 to 2,800 degrees, hot enough to melt uh, uh, ore and, and precious metals, etc. So the king had his men heat up the furnace. Then he released his mighty men, his strongest men, to cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. Now this is the kicker. When they threw him into the fire, the fire was so intense that they died. It literally overtook them. They fell down dead. They took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in their clothing, in their turbans, in their cloaks, in their shoes, and just threw them in the fire. And the king was like, yeah, now nah, I got you. Let, let, let me see what you're going to say the next time. <laughs> but this is what I love about it. The Bible says in verse 25 that the king came and he looked down into the furnace. And when he looked down into the furnace, he said, Did, didn't we throw four, uh, three men into the fire? He said, I, I see Three plus one, I see four men walking around in the fire and, and, and the fourth one looks like the son of God. Wow. He called them forth out of the fire. Think about how God insulated them. Even in the fiery affliction, he preserved them. You know, the scripture says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that has come to try you as though something strange has happened unto you. The fiery trial will cause you to see how great your God is. Oh, yes, Satan will turn up the heat. <laughs> he will turn up the heat against your finances and turn up the heat against your home and turn up the heat to try to get you to bow down, to compromise your confession. But this is what's significant. God backs you up when you make a statement of faith. And this is where we see King Nebuchadnezzar having a quote unquote come to Jesus moment because he says, this is amazing. 
God sent his angels and delivered these three young men because they trusted in him. That's significant. They trusted in God, therefore God delivered them. He brought them out and this is it. They didn't smell like smoke. Their hair was not singed. They looked brand new. They looked as good or better than they did when they went into the trouble and into the trial. The fiery trial is not gonna kill you. It's gonna perfect your, de your declaration. When Satan turns up the heat, turn up your decree. When he turns up the pressure to try to get you to bow, speak more decisively and vociferously about who you know God is. So let me just give you some ways to turn up your decree before we end our program today. Job said it this way in Job 13, 15, though he slay me, yet will I trust God. And I emphasize, yet will I trust God. And then Hebrews 10, 23 says, hold fast your profession of faith without wavering because he's faithful that promise. Get a grip on your profession of faith because God is faithful that promise. So now God is moved by what comes out of your mouth. He's not moved by your bills. He's not moved by what, what's around you. He's moved by what you say. So I charge you and encourage you to speak possibilities when you're facing pressure and impossibilities. When you're facing your fiery furnace, speak supernatural possibilities. In fact, I ask you to speak in the faith tense. Speak in the I amness of God. Speak what you know he is and who you know he is. So here are seven things that I ask you to pronounce in the face of your fiery furnace, in the face of your trouble this week. Seven things that I ask you to pronounce. Get ready, get a pen, get a pencil, get your iPad out, get your tablet out, get your phone out, and I want you to put in it. Put, put these seven pronouncements in them. Are you ready? Let's go. Number one, say this. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Secondly, my body is made whole. Number three, my mind has no anxiety, only the peace of God. Four, my household is saved and serves the Lord. Someone else needs to say that. I'm going to repeat number four. Come on, say it with me. My household is saved and serves the Lord. Here's the fifth faith decree. All of my needs are supplied according to his riches and glory. Here's number six. I have no lack, but only abundance. And finally, here's number seven. God is getting the glory out of my fiery trial. Write those seven things down. I want you to say them all week long and know, regardless of what stands before you, that if God be for you, who could be against you? Make the decree, make the declaration, pronounce it. Now I want you to call, I want you to call this number, 773-471-3370. And we're here to pray with you and pray for you. Let us know what God is doing as you make a new faith statement in your life. God bless you and always know that your best is yet to come. Hi friend, for over 25 years, Operation Link Up has been making a difference in the lives of teenagers in the city of Chicago, Illinois. We emphasize three things, mentoring, motivation, and mobilization. Will you take a moment and think about how your prayer and your support can help us continue helping them? Take a moment and watch this. We've seen a mother who lost her son. We've heard strategy on how to connect with bully teenagers. We've also been equipped with insight on how to teach our youth how to war and take authority spiritually. Operation Link Up is a teen program that holistically empowers teens to excel. Since 1996, Operation Link Up has been mentoring, motivating, and mobilizing youth between the ages of 12 to 18 years old in Chicago, Illinois. Through our weekly empowerment programs, Teens are equipped to have good character, excel academically, master the performing and martial arts, learn audio and visual production, as well as be positive community shareholders. 
In spite of the hopelessness and discouragement among today's teens, Operation Link Up continues to shine bright and make a difference. We ask you to stand with us that we may continue to empower this generation. Your prayers and monthly financial gifts will enable us to expand our outreach efforts and services to teenagers on the southwest side of Chicago. Will you stand with us today by giving a special gift toward the mission of Operation Link Up? Your one-time gift or a monthly gift of $25 will enable us to continue to impact teens in a relevant way each week. Together, we can make a difference and reach this generation. Please go to ConnectionTV.net today and click on Operation Link Up to give your financial gift toward this vision. Or you may mail your gift of support to Connection TV, P.O. Box 437-740, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. Thanks so much for standing with Operation Link Up as we empower today's teenagers to excel. Your support is so vital as we strive to reach many of the hurting and hopeless teenagers of Chicago. We say at Operation Link Up, before you send them to jail or send them to hell, send them to us and we, we can make a difference. So will you pray about giving a one-time gift or a monthly gift of support to Operation Link Up? It will be so very appreciated and it will help us accomplish our goal of reaching teenagers one youth at a time. Thank you so much for your consideration and continue to pray for us. And we will continue to reach our teenagers. Together, we can make a difference. God bless you. Are you looking for a place to grow and fulfill your spiritual destiny? Then join us at Southside Worship Center. We are located at 7724 South Racine in Chicago, Illinois. We are a vibrant ministry where people care and overcome. You'll receive dynamic teaching and anointed worship along with relevant programs for the children, teenagers, and adults in your family. We have two dynamic services on Sundays at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Word Workout at 7 p.m. Be sure to check us out at sswcchicago.org or on Facebook. We hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for watching Connection TV with Pastor Titus Lee. We hope that you have been blessed and encouraged by today's teaching. We know that God has great things for you and your best days are ahead of you. We would love to hear from you. Feel free to visit our website, which is connectiontv.net. While on our site, you may listen to a message, explore our teaching archive, sign up for our newsletter, give an offering of financial support, or request prayer for any need that you may have. You may also call us at 773-471-3370 for prayer needs or to request our message of the month. Please mail your letters and gifts of support to Connection TV, P.O. Box 437740, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. We look forward to sharing with you again. Until then, let's stay connected.